she automatically disqualify herself from working at any job and going to any school because you know when you hear you wear your hair like this man you can't you, nobody will hire you and nobody will um, let you come to their school man because of the you know that's why we need the crown act and all that shit you know what i'm saying family members did something that resulted into them getting whipped or killed most of these things used to happen in the evening time when a child was sold off or somebody was getting whipped for something the black women used to cry all night behind it not even just the women the black people in general all the black slaves male or female when something happened to a family member or a close friend or anything they used to cry all night behind it and when the slaves used to cry about what happened all night long, the white slave masters, the oppressors, will wake up in the morning time and they'll tell the slaves, did you have a good morning? Basically, did you have a good cry out? Did you do enough crying last night because of what happened to their family member a day prior? So the white oppressors came up with good morning as a mockery towards black people during the slave. I wasn't expecting that. I ain't even gonna lie, man. She, she, I ain't even gonna lie, man. I was trying to figure out where she was going, if anywhere, but damn, I wasn't expecting that, man. No cap. You caught me slipping right there, sister. That sister caught me sipping, slipping, man. I ain't even gonna lie to you. She caught me slipping. I ain't. I, Family member a day prior? So the white oppressors came up with good morning as a mockery towards black people during the slavery times when they used to cry and mourn and grieve over what happened to somebody when they was whipped or killed or taken off to another plantation. So it was their way to make fun of the black slaves crying that night prior. So they would ask them, did you have a good morning? Did you have a good cry? And they will laugh about it. So that was their way of being funny towards the black slaves when they would cry all night about somebody that was hung, somebody that was killed. That was their way to make fun of them. Y'all know what mourning mean. All they did was take the you off of it. So nobody would think about what it Oh my God. Woo. Woo. And listen, man, all the black people who seen this video are now telling this shit to somebody. Brother, did you know that good morning? Do you know the do you know the genesis of the phrase good morning, brother? It's a bunch of that going on now. <laughs> black people don't 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 check anything. They ain't not gonna check it. We just gonna go, we just gonna go with it. Hey, good morning, brother. Hey, wait a second, brother. Do you understand the genesis of the term good morning? Let me break it down for you. You got a couple of minutes, brother? Now, nah, actually, man, I'm, I'm going to rush, man. Well, I'll walk with you, brother. Oh, shit. All night about somebody that was hung somebody that was killed that was their way to make fun of them y'all know what mourning mean all they did was take the you off of it so nobody would think about what it really originated from it was really a mockery towards black slaves and them making fun of what they did to their people when someone was hung killed or sold off to a different plantation so that was their way of being funny did you have a good morning did you have a good cry about that person's death? Did you have a good cry about your daughter being taken away from you and sold off somewhere else? Did you have a good cry of your brother being hung yesterday? That was their way of being funny. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I got to see these comments, man. I'm sorry, man. I got to see these comments, man. I got to see these comments, man. <laughs> Salute the bug off, man. 
bugger off supporting the channel, man. Salute to you, bugger off. Gift in the Off Nation membership, man. Thank you for that information, sister. And I have no doubt about the truth of it. Too many of our people forget and forgive. The very same people that continue to torture, maim, or kill U.S. today in 2024. And I swear up and down that it's not racism. Money and material things seem to blind us. I love this young lady. She is so knowledgeable. Glad you enjoyed her words. <laughs> this woman said, what about good evening? <laughs> See, the genesis of good evening, let me break it down for you. Good evening comes from back in the slave days. See, in the slave days, the male was considered to be an atom. The male slave was an atom, and the female slave was considered to be an Eve. So in the evening, when they would whip the slaves, they would usually whip the female slaves because they would whip the male slaves in the afternoon and whip the female slaves in the evening. Thus coming up with the term Eve. Eve being the female slave, Eve Ning, Eve Ning, Eve Ning. I should make a post about that and see if they see if I can fool them. <laughs> see if I can trick them, man. See if I can have them in the comment section, like, brother, that's deep, man. That's so deep. I, I get my subscribers up. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, man. I'm gonna make that video. Get my subscribers up, man. I'm, I'm, I'm you, my um, my Twitter followers or X followers with them. Bill Zuka crashed that party. Mm. <laughs> my man Beetlejuice, man. During slavery times, white people invented the phrase good morning to mock black peoples. Look at this idiot glider, man, on here trying to reason and shit. There have been and still are terrible people in this country. But like most sick people who do such things, they were not and damn sure are not now the majority. Good Christian Americans and some who are of other faiths love all our brothers and sisters. <laughs> Good night. See, let me show you how they broke down good night. You see how night has an N, an I, and a G? Well, that used to be a N-I-G-G-E-R. Good nigga. The white man appreciated when we worked ourselves very hard in the fields and were tired, thus being exhausted at the end of a long day from working and toiling in the fields, he would say, good nigga. And over time, 
it changed from good nigga to good nah, good nah. And then they just dropped the gur and called it night and added the T. So after working your body to the bone in the fields during a long day of toiling in the cotton fields and the tobacco fields, being exhausted as you walk back to the slave quarters, the overseer would say, good night, good night, good night, good night, as the slaves passed him back to their quarters for the, what we now call night. Brother, This brother's got a great idea, man. You know, since now, since, you know, <laughs> hey, listen, that girl said it. It's got to be true, right? So now, since, you know, she dropped this knowledge, man, this brother says, maybe you can use the Zulu greeting. Sani Bonani. Pronounce Sunny Bonani. It's plural. Though it can also be used to greet one person as well, since we believe you're never alone. Your ancestors are always with you. Simple meaning. I see you. I acknowledge your presence. Sani Bonani. Yeah, man, because we got to stop saying good morning because this black chick on TikTok told us to, man. This woman says, and that's why I say morning. I don't say good anymore once I knew the meaning behind that. <laughs> Let me see, man. I hope we got 200 likes, man. I hope we got up to 200 likes, man. I'm hoping we got up to 200 likes, man, now, man. Let's see, man, because I really want to I really want to get the show started, brother. Let's see, man. Okay, we got 200 likes, man. Thank you, guys. Continue to hit the like button, though, man. Continue to hit it. As you come in, man. Sunny banana. <laughs> Sunny banana. <laughs> these people are crazy, man. I feel sorry for these people. Just like I feel sorry for like. You know, you, <laughs> you just feel sorry for these people, man. These people are just. God, when you stop trying to educate them, though, and you, and you just, when you stop trying to educate them, when you just say, fuck it, man, I'm, I'm listen, man, you, you, you're right. It's such a weight off your shoulders, man. Salute to my man, Aster J, man, he says, let me make sure I read the whole thing, man. It says, ah, so when our African ancestors sold our black asses to gliders, they said goodbye <laughs> as a good riddance. Don't you niggas never come back here. 
Yeah, man. Goodbye, man. Get the fuck on. Don't give a fuck what they do to you. What's going on, man? Good morning. <laughs> That's why I'm doing it. I mean, I can't believe you would come in here and just insult me like that. Well, man. I, what choice do I have? I'm supposed to make fun of you. Oh, man. Jesus Christ, man. I actually looked it up. It came out in the 1400s. And good is short for God. So, man, did they butcher that. Brother, man. And that's why y'all say, what did you have for breakfast this morning? That's why y'all use that, because breakfast is had in the morning. That's why y'all do that little thing where y'all do with black people. Y'all say, uh, what if you didn't have breakfast this morning? Isn't that the question? Yeah, but you are right about evening. That is why we do it. Because Eve was in the evening and the the men got earlier in the day. You were actually right about that. Oh, I didn't know that one. I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no clue. I mean, where are they? Jeez, I don't even understand. I don't know, man. Where I don't know, man. I, I got Google and I still ain't going to look it up. That's how black, I'm black, man. Black person still ain't going to look that shit up. We got Google. We don't use Google. Black people stay on the internet the longest and never use Google. Amazing. Press one. Um, th this woman says, why does this matter now that slaves cried all night when slavery was still enacted 100 years ago? What is the significance? All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, at the height of slavery, 78% of slave owners were Jewish. Uh-oh. Since only 1.6% of the total population owned slaves, and Jews made up 3.125% of the population. This means that 40% of Jews own slaves, while only 0.035% of whites own slaves. <laughs> yeah, I knew the I knew about Aaron Lopez and the, the, the slave ships and shit. Yeah, they, they were they, the, they, yeah, they were the finances. Yep. Huh? They were the they're conversos. What they are is um juice crew, but they, they weren't kicked out of Spain right away because they converted to Christianity. Mm. Yeah, man. I knew about I knew about Aaron Lopez. Um I've talked about him before on this channel. But uh yeah there's a lot more of them. Yeah. Um wow seventy eight percent of the slave owners were Jewish. Um this I don't is know my first time. I, I don't know how true that is too but we know that it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we can't, we can't, yeah, I can't put a number on anything. Who knows? But um, that's in America, though. Um, yeah, but I do know that they financed the ships because those ships were very, those voyages were very, um, they were, you know, they were, they were voyages. It was like UPS. It was like anything mm -hmm. where you shipping cargo. It was, it had to be, you know, it was a certain amount. Um, it was a certain amount lost that, that, that were going to be lost. You know, mm -hmm. but you stuff the ship. You stuff the ship tight because you knew you're gonna lose a certain amount. So you, so you could get as many over here as you could. Yeah, um, man. Ah, uh, let's see. It's interesting that this stuff is staying on X, though. Some of this Juice Crew critique. Yeah, this stuff. Well, this is because of Elon, man. Yeah. Um, just the Elon Musk effect. All these people would have had their channels, I mean, their um, their um, accounts um, suspended or terminated. Yep. If they were, if 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 boy, last year when Jack Dorsey was still um, uh, let's see, what is what I'm gonna show you? There's one I'm gonna show you. Um, that did I save that one? Oh yeah, here it is. Speaking of the juice crew, man. <laughs> Speaking of the juice crew. Welcome to Pocatello, Idaho. Population 55,000. The quiet community was once a stop on the Oregon Trail. 
now this town is welcoming weary travelers once again, but this time they're coming to stay. As soon as we heard about these folks who are our new neighbors, who are our partners and allies, um, actually in our national defense, who had to flee their country and come here, we were all in. Pocatello has never taken in refugees before, but when Afghan families needed a place to go, community leaders here had an idea. We don't look at what we are different, we look at what we have the same. And so that is, that is the secret sauce. Yo, can you explain explain this to me, man? What what is wrong with y'all, man? I, I got a fire up here, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew. I have I have some ideas, but I don't know. But I think the thing is, is like these people haven't been exposed to the outside world in any way, so they don't know. They the have reason. TV and they have the internet, man. Right. They, they they've been to war. These you know, this is fertile U.S. Army recruiting grounds. People have been all over the world. People from Idaho have been all over the world via the armed services, man. Um, people from Idaho have the internet. People from Idaho have television, cable, QAnon, OAN, fucking everything, man. News Nation, goddamn Fox. These motherfuckers got everything, man. This is a DNA thing. Man. This is so oh, no, I agree. I agree. <laughs> you guys are you guys are fucking stupid in your own right. See, I'm a son man. I can admit sons are dumb. We dumb in like the you can clearly see our idiocy. Like right. we we our dumbness is like on display. Y'all dumb shit has to be revealed in certain situations. Press one. <laughs> but I think it's more naivete than dumb. You know, they will. Yeah, and that's dumb. And being this naive is dumb. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I've, I've begun to hate them. I mean, these people cause our problems. And they do it for their own self-esteem. There's uh, this quote from T.S. Eliot about it, where he's like, uh, half the harm that's done in the world is done by people who don't mean to do harm, but the harm doesn't concern them in the endless pursuit of feeling good about themselves. And that's really all wow. this is. Wow. They don't care that they hurt people as long as they think well of themselves. That's deep, man. I, I always like T.S. Eliot, man. Um, that's that's very deep, man. Damn. That's deep, man. I got to put that on the shirt, man. And there's also uh, there's something from Aldous Huxley where he says there's nothing more delicious than the thought of a moral crusade, the ability to hurt your enemy for any reason. Because a lot of this... That guy probably has animosities in his city, and he wants to impose these people on his city. He doesn't know anything about Afghanis. He knows that the people in the city don't want them. So it's kind of like a, a rebellion, but mm. they, don't, they don't know how to rebel. So they want to impose these people on others, if only to dilute their own sense of alienation. Like, we, I want to make more of us. And that's kind of what's happening. Like, that's my theory. Mm. I don't know. No, then, no, that, that stuff sounds, I mean, these things are plausible, man. Because I don't think it has to do with the Afghanis. They could be anybody. You know, it's just that they're downtrodden, so you have the um, moral legitimacy to say, well, I'm helping the poor, I'm helping the needy. We've essentially made that currency, high currency in our in our culture. So that's what they're doing. But they're looking for a cheap way to do it. They're not trying to improve someone that's got an okay life but could be better. It's easier to see progress in someone that's from some backwater, and now they can read, and you get more out of that, I guess. I, I mean, that's my theory. Now, how do you explain the fact that y'all have done that from Samaria to Rome to, you know, um, how have we not learned? All of your great um, empires, you know, or you know, you did that. Throughout the throughout the ages, and currently, you're doing it all across the globe, from Norway to Sweden to um, you know Germany to the United States to Canada, everywhere you are to Australia, everywhere you are, you're doing it currently, and you did it throughout the ages. How do you did? How do how do you? Um, <laughs> I don't know. 
Minneapolis. <laughs> I, I wish I could. Well, the thing is, is that it's well, DNA like, then, right? Uh, <laughs> well, it's the cycle of it because you think about it now with people who start companies. The people who starts the company has no relationship to the people who run the company now. So it's different people moving into different situations. You're not actually looking at the same people. Uh, even if it's the children of someone who wants to do well, they don't, um, they don't, they didn't keep what made their father. Hey, great. You guys have a, you guys write down, you have written language, you have constitutions, you have things like that, where it's like, you know what I'm saying? So because mm -hmm. you guys aren't just like passing down <laughs> languages, you guys write stuff. You guys have chronicle history through the years. You guys have, um, you 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 can see like Africans, we wouldn't be able to know what happened in whatever land we our tribe was living a hundred years ago, other than like some convoluted, distorted um oral tradition. You guys know exactly what George Washington and Alexander Hamilton and John Quincy Adams and all those people were doing and Ben Franklin, you know exactly what they were doing and exactly the challenges they met. You know exactly what the Greek Aristotle and Socrates, you know exactly because you guys write things down and you know exactly the mistakes they made. You know exactly what they did wrong. You know exactly the challenges they faced and you guys still repeat it. That's why I say it's DNA, man. Oh, it's gotta be. It's gotta you know? be. Yeah. This kind of yeah, pathological man. altruism. Yeah, I, I, pathological altruism. I can see that. Welcome to Pocatello, Idaho. Population 55,000. The quiet community was once a stop on the Oregon Trail. Now this town is welcoming weary travelers once again. But this time, they're coming to stay. As soon as we heard about these folks who are our new neighbors, who are our partners and allies, um, actually in our national defense, who had to flee their country and come here, we were all in. Pocatello has never taken in refugees before. But when Afghan families needed a place to go, community leaders here had an idea. We don't look at what we are different. We look at what we have the same. And so that is that is the secret sauce. Typically, refugee families brought to the U.S. are sponsored by one resettlement organization or one church. But in Pocatello, a handful of churches and temples pitch in to help the same family. It takes a village. In this case, it takes the town of Pocatello to help refugees. I never had anyone question why we were doing it. Yes, yes. Faith leaders formed an interfaith coalition just to help refugees. How do we respond anyway? Yeah, how do we that. respond anyway? Our goal is to help them become part of the community, not to keep them as a separate entity. And there's an expression in Judaism called tikkun olam, which means to heal the world. Uh, Jews are called to heal. Oh, these are Jews crew. <laughs> what are you asking me for? You're asking me like I you know. You notice like all the not at first. Home and not temple at first. shit and the Star of David everywhere? I just yeah. Did, yeah. I just noticed it, yeah, because they're, they're white people, but they're Jews. Had anyone question why? The hell knows. Yes, yes. Faith leaders formed an interfaith coalition just to help refugees. How do we respond anyway? Yeah, how do we that? respond? Think about how evil you have to be to invite, to, 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 to go to a country and then invite your mortal enemies in. I mean, people who you like have been have been a thorn in your side, according to you, for eons. Who the Afghanis? No, oh, no. Um, it's Middle people. Easterners. Those people. Oh well, yeah, but they're not. You, we're not talking about Arabs here, man. We're talking about different Islamic people. I'm just, you know, to be clear. So, like, they probably still are not fond of Jews or anything, but like, they're not the mortal enemies of the Jews, the Afghanis. I don't think. You also have to understand, Doc, that the uh, Jews crew and Islam have been collaborators against the West for far longer than they've been antagonists against each other. Oh wow. This this sort of thing, like opening the gates for you know they you know there was no juice crew when this town was founded. They'll they come to your town. They open the gates. That's how Constantinople fell. That's how Hungary fell. 
That's how yeah. parts of Rome fell. The the juice crew comes in, they're disgruntled, and then they sell secrets to whoever who you know wants to attack. That's how the Ottomans advanced in the Balkans. Wow. So we wrote that down and we didn't learn. Good evening. It's Wednesday night. We begin with breaking news here tonight. Another act of chaotic violence at a SEPTA bus stop. Eight teenagers shot late today, targeted as they waited to go home from school. Please say this latest act.